morning and welcome to Leatherwood. Here's what you need to know. If you're a first time guest or a recent guest, we hope you felt welcome as you entered in today. Guests, we have one request of you and that is as you leave, if you wouldn't mind stopping by our welcome center, getting a guest card, filling that out and exchanging it for a gift from us. Here at Leatherwood, we believe that small groups are the strength of our church and all of our small groups are meeting. So how do you find one for you and your family? Well, there are two ways. You can either go out to our lobby, there's a board on the wall, or you can go to our website, leatherwood.church, pick a class, make a plan, and join us for our next scheduled gathering. Here at Leatherwood, we have an awesome opportunity called Discover Class. This is a new member slash prospective members class that meets for one session with the staff. We answer any questions that you have about our church, provide lunch, and give you some great resources. So if you're new here, or you've been coming a little while and you're not sure what your next step is, it's probably this class. How do you get in it? You just see me or one of the other staff members and say, I want to be in that next Discover Leatherwood class and we'll make sure that that happens. Here at our church, we have many easy ways to give, so please pick the way that's best for you. You can give online at our website, easytithe.com backslash LBCAL. You can give in the plates as you leave today. You can mail it in or drop it by the church. And once again, church, thank you for an incredible year so far and your continuous generosity. Once again, we just want to say thank you so much for you being here today, guests. We know that you have options, and we don't take it lightly that you've chosen to worship with us today. This coming Wednesday night, we have family night. That's something on Wednesday nights at 6.30 for all ages, nursery all the way up. We would love to invite you back to join us next week. Thank you for being here. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. morning. That was pretty bad. Good morning. So glad to see you here this morning. If you will, please stand and worship with us. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore ooh you're in the Father's house I will not be in
Praise His name.
Amen. Amen. That's a song we often use in the invitation, but it's a song where we're making a commitment. Wherever he leads, I will go. I pray that that's on your heart today, and that's the direction you are headed and what God is doing in your life. I'm going to do something before I crank up my sermon here this morning. Uh, this week we will have Veterans Day, and I... I'm a very patriotic person, and I know that Leatherwood Baptist Church loves its veterans. And if you have served in the armed forces in any capacity, would you honor us by standing right now? We could recognize you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all over the place. Thank you. Amen. Amen and amen. I, I appreciate your service. Uh, and, and then today... We are, we are on the front lines of a different battle. And if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're in the army of the Lord. And here we are to be faithful servants, to follow him, and uh, to be, be in that action. And I promise you that uh, we do see a lot of action 
in, uh, in our life. T the title of the message is How to Walk with God. Uh, in the faith chapter in Hebrews chapter 11, I want you to go ahead and be turning there. Uh, Abel taught us that we must come to God by way of a blood sacrifice in order to get right with God. And we know that Jesus is the ultimate blood sacrifice. In, in Enoch, we find how to stay right with God, and that's by walking with God. It's a, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we need to develop, and that, that ought to be our lifestyle, is walking with God. Sometimes I think we're walking away from God, or we're walking in a different direction, or we're maybe even running from God. And that may be where you are today, but God is seeking you out, that in Christianity, we're the only major faith in the world today that, that uh, where God seeks us out. Every other religion is man seeking God. And I'm grateful for this. In Hebrews chapter 11, and if you could stand with us if you're able, we'll read in verse 5 and 6. I'm going to ask you to do something that I don't normally ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to flip to Genesis uh, when you get through there in the fifth chapter. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 5 and 6. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And it's impossible, uh, without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And now if you could go back to that first book in your Bible, book of Genesis, um, I'd like for us to look in the fifth chapter in verse, uh, well, let's read verse 21 and following. Genesis chapter 5, starting in verse 21. Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God took him. Thank you. Be seated. We, we know that there are three different books of the Bible that Enoch is referred to in the, in the Word of God and in the book of Jude, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But, uh, but I want us to, as we go on this journey, there are four things in the life of Enoch that I believe teach us to walk with God. <clears throat> the first thing that we see here is Enoch's persuasion about God. Are you kind of like uh, did somebody have to convince you of stuff along the way? Uh, every now and then, my, my wife will tell me something, and I say, I just, I don't know. Uh, where'd you hear that at? She said, well, I got it on Facebook. Well, if it's on Facebook, it must be true, right? <laughs> and so that's kind of where we are. I have to be persuaded to believe certain things from time to time in and, uh, and, and that. This book here, many years ago, I was persuaded by godly parents and a godly grandfather that loved me and, and introduced me to Jesus that it's all true. It doesn't just contain the Word of God. It is the Word of God. I, I believe every word in it, and, and I'm going to trust God's direction for us, and I believe this book. Uh, sometimes I, I don't always do what the book says, and uh, I find myself in trouble. And anytime you go against God, you're, you're automatically going into a pool of trouble. We need to walk with God, and he'll keep you on the straight and narrow in the direction we need to go. Enoch believed God. He was persuaded. He, he, he trusted God. Enoch's faith was such that he was commended as one who pleased God. You know, I, different things we put on our tombstone. I, I tell you, it would be neat if somebody could put when we died that uh, here lies so-and-so, he pleased God. Wow, what a testimony that would be. What a testimony that, that we could have that we are pleasing God. The word faith here uh, is used, it, it literally means a firm persuasion, totally convinced. Paul uses this same term over in the book of Romans chapter 4. Uh, it talks about the belief here, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised, referring to Abraham as he would be in obedience and follow him. Again, it's that term fully persuaded persuaded, convinced. I believe it. There's no doubt. It doesn't matter where you believe it or not. It doesn't matter what the world says. Uh, God said it, and it's true. Can I tell you, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It's still true. 
And we're going to trust in the Lord right here. Enoch had a great persuasion about God. He was fully convinced. There's a lot of things we, we can put faith in that, that baffle me in this old world. Uh, we put our faith in the economy and the finances and stuff, and it's up and down, and I promise you it will bruise you up along the way. We put our faith in sometimes in a job that we've had 25 years, and one day somebody comes in and says, you no longer work here. We, we put our faith in a lot of things in life, and sometimes we, we put our faith in our own body, and we, we're thinking we're, we're uh, beyond uh, anything happening to us, but, you know, we get old. Uh, Enoch lived 365 years. I don't think none of us going to make that in here, right? We know that's not going to happen. But the truth is, sometimes even the old bones fail us along the way. The thing I'm as sure of and I put my faith in is my Lord. I trust him. I'm going to trust him with everything that I have. I trust him not only to live my life, I trust him in my eternity. I'm going to bank my eternity on the Lord. It's not a gamble to me, by the way. It, it's a faith, a trust in the Lord. So Enoch is teaching us that if we're going to walk with God. We need to be persuaded that it's worthy of the walk. It's worth the walk, and that's, that's what we need to do. We need to hold his hand. I want him to hold on to me. I tend to get off course every now and then. I tend to go and stuff, you know, I, we got a brand new little puppy. Bless our hearts. I, I, I said, to my wife, we don't need another dog. Well, we, we, we have another dog. And, and that, we're trying to train that little puppy. He's just about nine weeks old, and, and uh, it's got the attention span of a gnat. I'm telling you right now, it's, it's, something comes along, it's a beautiful butterfly, and it turns and goes this way and does that, that kind of thing. I think sometimes I'm like that little puppy. I, I'm in my journey and my direction to, to, to follow the Lord, and something gets my eye. Something distracts me. Something comes along the way, and I'm off, all of a sudden off course and looking in a direction I shouldn't look. I have to keep my eyes on the Lord. The Bible says, lift up your eyes from whence cometh your help. Look up to Jesus, follow him, and put your, your faith in him. And we need to be, we need to not only talk it, we need to walk it. And that's what Enoch is teaching us to do, is to walk in the faith that we say we possess. Walk it, folks, when you get up in the morning. Our faith is not just a Sunday faith. It's a seven-day-a-week, 24-hour-day faith. It's important for us to be faithful. But not only do we look at Enoch's persuasion about God, we see Enoch's meditation on God. We, we, we must believe that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. And so, let me ask you something. Do you fellowship with God? You know, we can walk one another and never say a word. If you do that with God, something's wrong. Even if we're not talking, we need to be listening. You know, prayer is not just us uttering words. Prayer is pausing and listening to God. Sometimes I listen to him by reading his word. And sometimes I just, I, I, pref I read scriptures and different things in, that are speaking to me, and I know that that's what God is telling me to do. I need to listen more than I need to talk. The truth is I need to put my faith in God, my meditation. Enoch meditated on God's word since he didn't have the Bible he just trusted the Lord and walked with God. Do you, do you diligently seek the Lord today? Or is it just a happenstance? Or maybe if you've got time, you're going to give God his due. Folks, we better make time this morning because we're running out of time. There's going to come a day when God said enough is enough. And either he's going to come or he's going to, we're going to die and meet him that way. But either way, we're going to meet up with God. And we need to be ready for that. And I would challenge you to meditate on the Lord. You know how to worry? I bet everybody in here knows how to worry. I do that some time to time, and I get caught up in the silliest stuff. You ever do that? And it just kind of like a, it just rolls over again and again in your brain. You'll go over that scenario, and you think, man, I don't know what we're going to do. You think God's up in heaven twiddling his thumb saying, my, my, I don't know how I'm going to help that person out. God's got the answer. We need to trust him. We need to be, if we can worry, my point is, is we can meditate on God. And we need to put that time into worshiping our Lord and Savior of everything that we are. I'm going to go back to that, that uh, verse of Scripture over in Genesis. It says that, that um, 
All the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I guess uh, in that day, they probably had Enoch's picture on all the milk cartons, don't you guess? Have you seen this man? He's no longer with us. I mean, it disappeared. It, it's just unexplainable. And, and we look around, and we see, we see that going on in society today. Uh, my wife, I guess it's um, cousin twice removed, young man that had been missing, was found dead this past week. And uh, we, we, don't, we don't often understand the whys and that kind of stuff. But if I come up missing one day and somebody finds my old body down the road, understand this, I'm not where that body was found. I'm with the Lord. I, my trust is in him. I'm going to walk with God. And I appreciate how the Lord keeps me in line. Sometimes he has to chasten me. He has to bring discipline in my life. He bring correction. Sometimes he uses other people. Sometimes it's through my church family and and our friends, a dear friend will tell you the truth, even if it hurts your feelings. And, and, and that's okay. We need that. We need to hear the truth and let God speak to us. But we're not going to hear God if we're not meditating on God and praying to God. Let me ask you, what consumes you? What, what sin keeps you from walking with God? What stays on your mind all the time? Is it, is it about earning more money? Is it about paying the bills? Is it about your health? Is it... Is it about the family relationships and on and on and on? I'm not saying don't pray about it and not be concerned. What I am saying is don't let that dominate your life. Our walk with God is a sweet walk, and we need that today. I need to walk with him, and I'm glad he walks with us. To walk with God, we have to line up with God, right? I mean, you're not, you're not going to walk with God if you, if you show up going the wrong way. I want to line up with God. To walk with God, we need to walk the same way God goes. And we need to go in his direction in our life. It's important for us to do that in, in our journey as we go the way God goes. And by the way, this is a direction book of how to walk with God. And we need to apply it to our lives. And, and as God chose fit that in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, the Hall of Fame of Faith, we're seeing many people who loved the Lord and was faithful and we got old Enoch mentioned here. Enoch was a faithful man. He walked by faith. He trusted the Lord. And, and the Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to, the, to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We've looked at Enoch's persuasion. He was persuaded. We've looked at Enoch's uh, meditation on God. But thirdly, I want you to see Enoch's proclamation for God you know uh, we campaign a lot you see these everybody's always got them a sign up different things and uh, I was at a roadblock yesterday come by and they were taking up money but I couldn't see what they were taking up money for I don't want to just give money I don't know what it's for I, I, I need to understand why, why you're there I'm a charitable person in, uh, in that uh, out there but, but I want to know what you're what you're taking up money for. You know, we don't have a sign that says I'm a Christian. I guess we can make it, but we are the sign. And as we walk in, in this world and people see us, we're the one that's making the proclamation of who our belief is in and what we're believing and what direction we're going. And, and some of you sign is a little bit more abstract than others. In my neighborhood, we line the streets with those little white lights. Everybody has to do it. Uh, the, the neighborhood folks will get after you. So we, we put, put them out and get that kind of thing. And I got to thinking a few years ago, it's, we got all these decorations things, but I don't have anything about Jesus up there. So I got to looking for me a manger scene. Well, I ordered this thing it, as it, it, online. It looked pretty good, but when it got, got to me, it was kind of hideous. It was, we, it, it was just all kind of weird colors, and we called him Disco Jesus. And uh, <laughs> I put... I put him out one year, and I thought, hey, you know, I just almost, I just, I can't handle it no more. So I put that thing back in the basement, and, uh, and I got me, I got me a, a little white cutout thing. And by the way, some of you probably won't want to ride with me because I'm listening to Christmas music now. And I know, I understand all that, but why can't we sing it all year? I mean, you know, Jesus was born, and he came in, and we celebrate that. I'm, 
I'm just that way, okay? But, yeah, yeah I know, everybody's got their opinions. But we, Enoch went against the popular trend of his day by proclaiming the truth. I mean, he not only was a walking billboard for the Lord, he lived it and he was a prophet. In fact, Jude talks about his prophecy here. If you want to turn with me in the book of Jude, they have one chapter, and it's right before you get to Revelation. Hard book to find. You'll go past it if you're not careful. But in Jude, verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, Now Enoch was seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have uh, committed in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. He says God is going to execute judgment. And that's exactly what God did. And uh, he would convict all the ungodly. And, and, he, and he preached that message. Enoch's prophecy was fulfilled in the flood. God is a God of love and mercy. But he's also a God who punishes sin. And, and we got to preach the whole truth. Amen? We, we have to give you all the story here. God is a merciful, glorious, wonderful God who provision never runs out. Whatever we need, it's there. We understand that. Uh, it, we can trust him in all things. But God is a God of judgment and, and wrath, and, and we need to understand that today. I, I'm telling you, I have a reverent fear of God, for he's a holy God, and I'm an unholy man. And, and I see that as I listen to him, <clears throat> as, the, as the coal is put in my lips and I feel the sizzling burn of the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I realize there are things that don't look like Jesus like they ought to. They look too much like Randy. And, and you probably have that problem as well along the way that if you're not careful, what our proclamation and our, our billboard is saying something rather than I love the Lord. It says I love me. <laughs> it, it says I'm going in a direction I shouldn't go. It says all those kind of things, and sometimes we flash it really loud. I'm telling you, if we could just get Christianity to have as many billboards as Andrew Shannara, we would uh, we could we'll put them out, out there. You know, that's expensive stuff. But uh, <laughs> it's important for us to have the presence and the proclamation that we at Leatherwood Baptist Church or at Sachs First Baptist, or at Mount Zion, or at Hillcrest, or at Lloyd's Chapel, or wherever we are, we're people that love Jesus. We love Jesus. We ought to be flashing that sign. And if you love Jesus, you're going to love other people. You're going to welcome them and encourage them along the way. Can I encourage you to proclaim the Lord? Uh, so many times... I, I try to be a better witness. I, I, I've confessed this. I, I want to finish well. And when I eat in a restaurant, which is quite often, uh, many times I get the opportunity to say to the waitress, we're fixing to pray over our food. Can, what can we pray for you about? Just yesterday, uh, I was in the parking lot of, of uh, Lowe's and uh, going in there and getting, you need to keep me out of Lowe's. Anyway, I, I was there and I, I saw this lady was in a car just like my Toyota, and I don't see many like that, and I made a comment to her, and, and she began to talk, and we got into a pretty long conversation, and I, I told her I was a Baptist preacher, and that scares a lot of folks, <laughs> and uh, she kind of just went right over that, and we, we kept talking, and she said something about uh, where, where was I preaching, I said, well, I, I'm an uh, interim at Leatherwood Baptist Church, and and uh, I said, I invite you to come. And she, she said, she may, be, she may be here this morning. I don't know. Yeah, well, raise your hand. <laughs> but my point was, why would I talk about cars and building material and, and I wouldn't talk about Jesus, about my Lord, my church, and those kind of things? When God opens a door for you, let's be who he's called us to be. Let's have a great proclamation for God. And even though part of Enoch's proclaiming was a, was a prophecy of judgment, sometimes our proclaiming just says you need Jesus in your life. 
The fact is, the way is straight and narrow, and few be that find and follow the Lord. But broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many are the majority, the ones that's going to choose that way. Which road are you choosing today? Which path have you chosen? You want to walk with God? Are you walking against God, away from God? You're walking with the devil himself. The Bible says, if we're not a Christian, Satan is our father. Whew. That's pretty hard stuff right there. I don't want Satan to be my father. I, I want to follow the Lord. You trusted Jesus today? Let's look at Enoch's translation by God. That's where everybody wants to get in this story. You see, Enoch walking with God, and one day he wasn't walking with God. He was with God. <laughs> And it's a beautiful picture here. God was so pleased with Enoch that he didn't wait until Enoch died for him to come to heaven. And, and, and in fact, uh, it says uh, in verse 5 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, Enoch was taken away so he didn't see death, was not found because God had taken him for before he was taken. He had this testimony that he pleased God. In fact, I think everybody in that chapter, we're going to know, pleased God. But also over in, in uh, Genesis chapter 5, it says, All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, you know, I've often said, the way I want to go <laughs> when it comes to my time, I'd like to go lay down to sleep and just wake up in heaven. I mean, you know, that's just... I don't, I don't have the right to ask for that. I, I, I may not get that request at all. But, but if I did, that's how I'd write my ending, okay? I may suffer a lot. I may go through a lot of things. But none of us are going to have what Enoch did. Walking with God one day, and I heard it talked a lot of times. We can add a lot of stuff to this. God said, we've walked a long way. We're closer to my home than yours. Why don't you just follow me? home whatever it was the reason God brought him on God was so pleased with Enoch he didn't wait for him to come to heaven God just brought him for 365 years he faithfully walked with God but in the instant God took him now there's something important about that instant won't you listen to me now here we are we're in church this morning, time change and all. It didn't affect you. We got here earlier. It's the other time change that messes with us, isn't it? I wish we'd leave it alone. But anyway, here we are. We're in God's house today. We're listening to the preacher. We're thinking about what we're going to eat for lunch and if we can beat the Methodist to the restaurant. You know, I understand all that. And here we are. We think we've got an afternoon. We think we have a tomorrow and a next Sunday. And maybe we will, or maybe we won't. The instant can come just like that. Not looking for it. It surprises us, kind of knocks us off our feet. Enoch had a translation by God, which literally means he was here one instant, and he was with God in another instant. We die in an instant. We may not have time to get things right and get things in order. But you've got time this morning. You've got time to deal with it, to say, Lord, I'm going to get my heart right. I'm trusting you. I'm putting my faith in you. I'm asking Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm giving you myself. You've got time to do that this morning. I'm going to ask you to do it. If you're not there, then you get there today. We need to walk with God. We need to go out of this building walking with God and serving God. And the world needs to see the Lord in our life, and we need to be that great proclamation. We ought to be persuaded about it, and we ought to be meditating on him all the time. It's not really important how you die, when you die, or where you die. What is important is where you go when you die. Where are you going to go? Heaven or hell? You can't work your way into heaven. You can't get good enough. It has to go through Jesus Christ. You ready? Are you ready to die or spend eternity with the Lord? Let's walk with God today. Let's walk like God today. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your time and your presence here. Thank you for creating us and putting us together as a church family. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here today that's never trusted you, that 
they would say yes to you before it's eternally too late. Dear Lord, I realize that there are other decisions that need to be made. Just help us to be honest with you and be faithful and obedient and do the things that please you, O oh Lord. Our job is to please you and follow you. And God, I just pray for that today. Speak to us in this invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning? If God speaks, would you come? You come.
him.